Good morning, I'm Larry Spencer. Uh, I'm part of the sort of non uh, off-campus faculty and staff uh, committee for the 150th anniversary. And I'm here today to interview uh, Margo Swift. So Margo, let's start out with uh, when did you arrive in Plymouth? Yeah. Well, uh, 1979, last and, century. <laughs> okay, and, and what was it called at that time? Was it the college or the teacher's college or the university or? You know, it's, it, it's a very roundabout way, you know, sort of. Uh, my husband was offered the chairmanship at uh, Plymouth State, as it was called then, in the music department. And we had been living in Memphis, Tennessee for three years. And uh, before that, Rochester, New York, Bob had taught at Eastman, and all these years, I had taught public school music, and as I did in, in uh, Memphis. So we both kind of wanted to get back north to the Northeast after living in Memphis for three years. Very, very hot, humid summers. Kind of like last weekend here. Right, right, which is uh, unbelievable. <laughs> um, which I wasn't happy to see. Um, but he decided that he kind of liked this position. It, it was uh, a smaller college, he had said, <laughs> and uh, he would kind of be building a department. It was okay. the, 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 um, the major was small. And so here we are, a uh, big move from Memphis, and I had been teaching in uh, one of three or four junior high schools in Germantown. Tennessee, a lovely suburb of Memphis, uh, population 1,200 in grades 7 and 8. Wow. And I said, hmm? <laughs> so uh, we packed up. It was a big move. Our kids uh, were coming up here to go to school, of course, 5th and 7th grade. That was, that was big. Um, and uh, so he, you know, we, we land here, and we, I, I sort of in charge of looking for a house. And that was a challenge in 79. They weren't building a lot. And, uh, you know, the town kind of folded up around seven or something. We wanted to get something to eat the first night we were here. And so, uh, you know, the excitement uh, was tamped down a little bit. <laughs> I said, it was more of a, hmm, what are we doing here? But things happened so fast, Larry. Uh, he had to jump right in immediately. The, the lady um, that interviewed him all of a sudden, boom, picked up and left. She was the handbell director and, and did a lot with, with um, piano. Am I getting ahead on my questions? No, no, you're doing Is that fine. okay? So. And she's leaving. The band man is leaving. It's a small department, and, and I mean, he really had to jump in and make some replacements, right. and school was starting. I mean, our kids were so all... So what was your feeling of coming from a big city to oh. a town at that time that was Yikes. Uh, maybe 3,000 people or something yeah. like that? I mean, small is a relative term, you know, yeah. and we got here, and it was really small, and, you know, the campus didn't look like it does now. I, I mean, it wasn't... That's, wasn't really a campus, was it? Ooh, not scrubbed up or anything. You know, I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was scary. But we had so much to do. Um, and the feeling of, what are we doing here, was just sort of, you know, way in the background. He had all of these responsibilities I thought I would do. Uh, okay. Well, now, for yourself, were you involved with teaching right from the beginning? I, th I thought I would look for a public school position. Okay. And did you find one at that time? Well, there were, a co I had, I think, had some communication with a superintendent mm -hmm. of some sort for the schools. And he said, sure, come along. And I sent my resume. And I, I think I went to Romney and maybe Thornton. Mm -hmm. But we're talking days before the beginning right. of the semester for the college. The right. public schools had already right. started. And, and, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, the department needed an accompanist because uh, the lady had left. And, uh, and they, nobody was to do the handbells, which okay. Catherine Stewart had started. Okay. And, and so here I am. I just got my master's degree at uh, University of Rochester. So I was, 
you know, boom, I was hired. So you were involved from the very start. And that's how right. I got here, you know, right. on my husband's, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, following mm -hmm. him. I mean, sometimes, it, it, you know, schools try to avoid having families have jobs in the same department. And did you see that as any problem? I any didn't problem? because uh, the department was in a very, a very bad position. I mean, they needed to fill people. Mm -hmm. And there was no time for a search, and I had, you know, my master's degree and right, 11 right. years of public school teaching. Right, right, right. So, uh, so what were your first years at Plymouth like? I mean, I assume you were accompanying the, the choirs. Well, um, actually, Bob took over the corral, I think, the second year he was oh. here, and I did that. But a lot of students. Uh, accompanying students for their senior oh, okay. recitals so senior performances and, things and like. of course the piano classes and then handles I've never done handles before okay. but I knew the sound I wanted and I right, could you know right. read the music and everything and, and that was uh, a required class for students or it was just an optional class an optional uh, okay. performance you know, like I think they had to be in, in corral or band or okay. something like that. But we had some really, from the start, some fine uh, readers and maybe one or two had played bells. That was mm -hmm. all, you know, mm -hmm. but you, you learn a technique and then you read. Right, right. So that, it was fun for me. So how did you find working with students then as compared to working with students before you retired, you know, toward the end of your well, what did you see different in the students, or were they the same? Or? There was such a difference in in the whole atmosphere of the college, but I thought it was pretty much, you know, I loved that transition from I had taught high school, from high school to college. I mean, they were so much more mature, mm -hmm. and and um, we did a lot of performing, and you know, you get close to students when you're traveling around with them a lot, and. Performing for the, you know, we were at the State House in Concord, mm -hmm. and uh, one that I'll talk about later on uh, for a Robert Frost Award. I enjoyed very much. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of time to think. You know, what are we doing here? I also had surgery. Uh, you know, about three weeks after we arrived. Wow, so and I mean, I may, you know, I, so I missed ten days of school or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and I, it was right at the beginning. It was just a harrowing experience. When I think back, when you're in the experience, you do what you have to do. You do what you have to do. That's true. I mean, that's a good way. Well, now, were you, what was the situation with respect to Silver Hall when you arrived? Was Silver Hall completed by the time? Primitive. <laughs> Primitive. Okay. Uh, oh, nothing like that. So you've that. gone through a couple of renovations in Silver Hall. Then. Oh, mercy. From the beginning. Yeah. It was Allison. Uh, Ford was the the theatrical person, and she worked with Bob and committees, and I mean, it was from scratch. It, we were performing and teaching in a gymnasium, Larry. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, my office was nice. It was right off the choral room, but I had a shower. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> you know, and which reminded me, oh yeah, this yeah. used to be a gymnasium. Well, that reminded me when I first got here in Mary Lyons. We were in the bottom of Mary Lyons dorm. Oh. My office had a shower, but the other office had a bathroom in it. So <laughs> the, the bathroom was nice. You want to take a shower to go to the bathroom. That was funny because well, we were also in Mary Lyon's basement during part of the time that Silver was being renovated. built. Yeah. So did you see a difference in terms of the students that came before the renovation of Silver Hall as compared to after the renovation? I mean, was Silver Hall a big, uh, what you would say? Uh, Drawing. Draw. I, 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 draw. I, I would say so. I don't. Yeah, I think there were a whole lot more students to choose from. I think that's the difference, and that, of course, with that would come with, with more talent. I, I remember some um, uh, auditions with students where I'm thinking, you know, this person would never get in a, you know, a normal music, and yet they would blossom. Mm -hmm. So right. there's something to starting ground floor and building on the other hand, it's nice to have yeah, students have a higher it. degree because some of them were coming from high schools that were more, you know, go, right. more going on in Plymouth. Right. And yeah, I think there was quite a difference because it was a drawing card for students, no question about it. Well, now here's, here's an interesting question. Uh, 
when you came here, football at Plymouth High was pretty much the thing. And there was very little music at Plymouth High. Uh, but I don't know if you realize that over the years, the music high, yes. program at Plymouth High has really improved and have you know fantastic band and choirs and things like that. I realize. Does that have any impact on on your children and, and um, yep, yep. your relationship with the college? And it hit me squarely because I was asked to start an elementary community chorus oh, okay. because the buildup wasn't there mm -hmm. in the very beginning, or I think that's the reason for the start of the chorus, and I did it for five or six years. Yeah. And uh, then it was taken over by someone else, and um, that was fun. That was, we built that from Kathy Hillier. So um, that was sort of almost like a community outreach at the It was, program. it was, but it was also to give the schools a yeah, little bit. Little bit. I, there wasn't much going on there, right. otherwise why yeah. have a committee, you know. So uh, on, on your bell choir, did the students have to audition to get into that, or was this just something they just signed up for? You know, they were mostly music majors. Okay, and so, so we it. knew they w were readers, except for two or three over the years, maybe more who'd had the experience or were just good readers that were interested. And uh, that was another thing about your how were your students early on versus late. They were motivated. That's what you really need from a student. I'd rather take a, a student that hasn't had as much background, who just wants to do well, compared to somebody that walks in and, well, I know it. Right. Uh, and I think that's what we had in the beginning. Uh, not that the other was the, the I know so, it. We've talked a little bit about this, but when you arrived in Plymouth, Plymouth was pretty much a dumpy little town. I mean, I hate to use that word, dumpy little town, but that was my impression when I came in 67. Oh, wow. 67? The, the, the interstate ended at Plymouth, you know, and then oh, you came my. down Main Street and there were no trees and no stores and what Oh, have my. You. So what was your impression coming from a big city like Memphis to... Well, first of all, very difficult to find a house. I, I'd mentioned that they, right. there wasn't new building or anything, and, and boy, that, and I thought, ugh. And then secondly, my aunt and all of my aunts and uncles had just gone through the town um, months before we had decided to move up, and, and they said, well, where are you going to get Plymouth, and is there a college there? <laughs> it was one of those, uh, and they said, oh, really? And uh, they came later, and it wasn't a pretty thing to show off in the beginning. Right. But the growth and the, I guess you don't realize so much is happening when you're right in it. But the growth of the college, Silver Hall, what a difference that made, to now. I, it used to be a traffic, uh, a real traffic jam was on the circle in Plymouth right. on Friday afternoon. You know, people come out and complain about traffic in Boston. Right, right. And I said, well, we have traffic too. But now with Tenney Mountain Highway, all the growth, that second huge right. supermarket. Right. Uh, it's just, I don't know, has it gone, I should ask you, has it been simultaneous with the growth of the college? Every, I, we feel people are moving up. Right. That's north. Right. Yeah, yeah. And how about your kids being integrated from a small town into another town? And could you say that they became college kids? Because I, I know we took advantage of the swimming oh. pool and a lot of the events at the college. And did your children do the same sort of thing? You know, we weren't, we didn't live right in town. We were at the top of Beach Hill Road, and there wasn't much building around mm -hmm. us at that time. Now there's stands of new homes. But, so we were still in that rural setting for them. It mm -hmm. was pretty, it was a culture shock for them. Half of the population of my junior high students were black. And the, our kids were in that same situation. Germantown, it, it was a professional mm -hmm. situation, and they were good students and very well behaved, I have to say. And, and the, the discipline was very strong. But, but they, it, it was funny. And, and because they were used to black and white mixing in Memphis, and we get to New Hampshire. In that year, I think there was a black Miss New Hampshire. And Jeffrey said, where'd she come from? Right, where did she live? We hadn't, you know, they hadn't seen any black students. That was a real shock for them. Yeah, yeah, I can 
And, uh, you know, so, yeah, that was different. Right. Now, uh, you know, during the time that you've been at Plymouth, was there any one person or a group of people that seemed to have an influence on you that either helped you out when you first got here or later on you became friends with and sort of uh, either mentored you or you mentored mm -hmm. them, that kind of thing? I think with my job and all, I mean, I knew I had to do, and I kept, they kept adding on new classes and so forth, and I was just a part-time, you know, maybe a lecturer, I don't know, I didn't have a title, and that grew into PAT under Dean Calico. Um, I would say the turning point for the, for living in New England, <laughs> you know, people, I don't want to say aren't that friendly, they just, you know, didn't talk a lot to us. In 80, where was I? I've got to check my right in 81. Uh, it was two years later. Bob was doing the Pemi Choral Society, which was a community outgrowth group that practiced in Silver Hall. And that first year, uh, I think there were 40 some maybe in the group. And that along with the college, along with the town, grew and grew and grew. But I became the accompanist for Pemi Coral that second year. And I have to say that became our second family. I, mm -hmm. There was the community. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few folks from the college mm -hmm. who sang in Pemi. And there was such a pulling together uh, to make that fly and make it more inclusive around the area. And I ju that just, uh, I think, I, I won't speak for my husband, but that was the light of my life, you mm -hmm. know, other than my family. And, and it was pretty soon after I had been teaching and all. And then we had the children's course. I was working with Kathy. Pammy Choral Society was just a bright, shining light. And and I see. I think I had all of the, um, uh, the. I don't know about mentoring, but just the closeness and the the comfort level and and professional. That was marvelous. So, and you mentioned her name, Kathy Hillier. It sounds like yeah. she's been the influence. Not she only has. I think she she was very influential in starting, and she came to me and said. We don't have enough music, elementary music ed going on at the elementary level. My kids don't have a really good performing choir. Let's start one. I know that Plymouth Friends of the Arts, she was very instrumental mm -hmm. in starting. Yeah. I know that Femi Choral Society was one of her babies. I mean, she's just incre an incredible force for the community. And then later on at the librarian. Oh, you know, mercy. What now, a force. Thinking of students that you've had, I mean, I assume that you've kept in contact with some of them, and what kind of influence do you think that you had on those students? Um, I hope a positive, you know, uh, influence, but I have to say, so many that I have known have been my husband's students. Okay. Okay. He just got a letter from, from Rob Hasha, whom uh, they met while Bob was doing a continuing ed up north. Okay. Up in the north country. Yeah, up in the north country. Yeah. yeah. And, and we have a student from, actually, was a good, the family was a good friend of ours in our first teaching positions. He was a pilot, 777s, traveled all over the world, and now he's got a couple planes of his own, lives in Casanova. We were just there to see them. Very close contact. I, I could go on and on. There are probably a dozen. You know, you're lucky if you have one right. or two. But that's probably due to the fact that it's a very small institution. In I think so, and in each place we've been, it hasn't just been my student or Bob's students. They come to the house. Mm -hmm. The handbells were at our house every Christmas for right. breakfast. Right. And, and there was a lot of that at Plymouth State. We used to have the entire department. That's how small right, right, it was. Small enough, yeah. Right, right. yeah, and we had to stop that because of numbers. But right. that makes a big difference. So you've been here for a while. What are some of the major changes that you've seen in the college? Just the size, but the professionalism, you know, I mean, everything looks professional. The buildings, Steve Sweedler, I remember when he started doing his magic 
and the place just blossomed. I mean, it, it looked nice. And then the buildings started coming, and all of a sudden, it's just an oasis, like in the middle of town. I mean, I know there, <laughs> there's noise and there are other things, right, right, but right. it looks like a real learning center. Right, right. Yeah. Do I have time for one incident? Oh, you got lots of time. I'll tell you when you need to stop. Oh, okay, well, maybe. Ask you, I was going to ask you a couple other questions. Yeah, let's uh, do it. So what do you think some of your major contributions have been to the college? So you talked about the Tiny Coral Society as a company. You talked about the Bell Choir. Um, what other kind of contributions did you think through well, the years that you've been able to make to the music department or to the whole college? Huh, let me see, because I, I think Pemmy and Handel certainly. Um, I had some marvelous elementary education students in two classes that I taught that they had to take. Uh, and tried, I, I think, almost more there than with our music majors, because I taught music in the elementary school after a few years, which our music majors had to take. And then I stopped doing the other. But I think with the elementary ed students, I showed them a way to use music in their classroom that might be very advantageous for, n not everyone learns in the same manner as we all know. And not everybody looks at a book and reads it and gets it and that's the end of it. Uh, some students, I know I reached when I was in the public school, a drummer, a drummer in eighth grade uh, who had a real problem with every single class he took. But on my concerts, on music yes, he loved the drum. <laughs> he was always banging right, away, right. you know. But for my concerts, I would use him, uh, and along with a string bass player that I had and so forth in, in junior high. I, I hope it's the individuals that realized how important music could be in, in children's lives, and usually your best students are your music made, your music folks, you know, uh, that that are creative, that can read, because there's a lot of intellectual stuff mm -hmm. going on with reading music, right. that transfers to the classroom, but show them how, um, of course, we, we would just, I would teach them a lot of songs, but then I would say, okay, how can you use this in your classroom? And I would purposely teach them songs about health, about science, about math, and so forth, so that, and they would get, so they would stand up in front of the, the others and, and teach it, because a lot of it was their self-image about, oh, mm -hmm. I don't wanna sing in front of somebody. Right, right, right. Get over that and sing with the kids, mm -hmm. and let them enjoy maybe your subject a mm -hmm. whole lot more, and maybe learn while they're doing it. So I, I would hope with, with the classroom teachers because I've heard later on, you know, I use it. I did that same lesson, right, you know, right, right. which is really important. Right. And you said you had a couple of stories that you wanted to tell. <coughs> well, we one is. We have a little bit of time to do that. So when okay. <coughs> Plymouth State every uh, two years would give a, a very prestigious award, uh, the Robert Frost Award. And in 1981, which was only a couple of years after it had the handouts. Uh, there was to be a presentation of Congressman, uh, and I will check his name, James Cleveland. So Congressman, U.S. Congress. And uh, he was to receive the award, and it was to be in uh, the Merrimack Hilton Hotel, the big city, you know, after we first arrived in Plymouth. And uh, the handbells were asked, I think, because we were a smaller group, and we could you know, lend some entertainment or some, some special uh, to, to this presentation. So it was an Easter, which I don't, I, I just can't fathom. I didn't remember it being Easter evening, you know, to have this presentation. And the featured speaker was Vice President George Bush. Oh. Now this was a year after Reg the assassination attempt on Reagan's life. And, um, but he was to speak, I don't know if they were friends or must have been, or he wouldn't have been to Merrimack, I wouldn't, anyway, he was there to speak. 
Um, but before he did, we set up, and it was really squeezed. It wasn't like I'm thinking of a huge auditorium in the Copley, you know, for the Sheridan, right, right, right. you know, with all kinds of auditorium room. Right, right. We were squeezed in, and, and the tables are larger. Well, they, they come out and are rectangular. Right, right. So we took up a fair amount of room just trying to get the belt set up. Right. We practiced, and we went back to wait to come out. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, all of these the place is swarming with Secret Service men. <laughs> and, you know, wow, yeah, this is the vice president. But more than just being the vice president, they had an assassination attempt. And boy, they were watching out for him. They got into our, Larry, they got into our, my handbell, big uh, carriers, boxes, which were lined with a gorgeous, lovely, thick red velvet. I had just purchased, not I, the department college, had yeah. purchased two octaves more. Catherine Stewart had three, which is a basic, uh, you know, you can do a lot of music with three octaves. Five octaves, you can do it all. Mm -hmm. And we, we ordered the other two, and these cases were lush. They started to pull on them, and oh, they wanted to, to yes! I said, you oh. can't do that. These are brand new <laughs> handbell cases, please. And you know, I, I you know, they, they 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 pushed more than pulled after right, that. Right. And I guess they realized there were no Uzis <laughs> or whatever knives. Nothing, no bombs hidden in the case. My heart just sank. But but anyway, we went out and started to play. A bush was never right near us. <clears throat> and I knew he wasn't up at the front tables, but we were playing and playing, and then we had a pause. And then somebody came up and said, the, the vice president would like to hear your last number. And it was a fanfare and, and you know, everything right, up in right. the air, <laughs> flamboyant. And he came in and sat down and everybody quieted down. Because it was almost like, oh yeah, those are handles, aren't they great? Right, but right, yuck, right. yuck, yuck. You got an audience of one, really. And my, my husband reminds me, there was just a hush. And so we played, and, and then, you know, he clapped, and it was really quite an experience for those students. In that kind of situation, I yes. think. Yes, you know. and we talked about that for ages, right. you know, the fact that it, it was a thrill, but it was the circumstance right, that, right. gee. So, so that was my Vice President Bush that, story. Sorry, okay. Well, in, in closing, uh, you know, from having been here for a while, 20, see, is it 21, 22 yeah. years? Yeah. Uh, do you think that anything that you learned from the past could be applied to the future? I mean, uh, you said that you had more to do with the students in the past. Should we be doing more of that in the future rather than sort of being sort of anonymous kind of thing that we might have since the college is so big now? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, I, you know, as we were here year after year after year after year, I know we were building traditions, but there were, were a lot of traditions here that seemed to be very important, and one of the main ones was the importance of the student mm -hmm. and, and the whole life of the student. Right. And, um, you know, having them in your home and having a personal relationship, not that you're budsy budsy, but uh, just that uh, you mean something to the faculty. And uh, I think that is so important. I don't care how big your place is, at least within your department or to something. Focus on the students. And yes, the students. and I, 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 you know, we, we aren't as active. Uh, I mean, been there, done that kind of thing to a certain point uh, with, uh, with the college. Uh, um, but I hope that is still going on and, and that there are people that will overlap that will, I think you have to have that carry, to carry, carry on. on Otherwise, who knows? Right, right. You lose the traditions if you don't have yeah. the continuity. Yeah, and that if, if this becomes the case where, gee, we've got a whole crop of new, I think they need, that the, the college needs to keep in contact. With, with the past, too. With, with yeah, the, we learn from the past. Right, right, and right. Uh, then you move forward. But I hope this is true and it needs to continue. So we're right about 30 minutes. Is there any one thing that you want to say? That, if that was it, I wanted to let okay. you know well, about well, the brief. Thank you very much. And this has been fun, Larry. I wasn't sure, but thank you.